Something funny that I've recently realized is that as I'm working on this model railroad, you know, we've, we've got this four by six sheet of plywood that we're building on right now. And we're building the Willamette and Port Kearney, this fictional model railroad that I'm going to be modeling. I've realized something though. Of the five engines that I have built, only number 21 is actually for the Willamette and Port Kearney. Like I have a bunch of engines and I know that some of them are going to be for the Willamette and Port Kearney, but of the engines at this point in time that I have built, only one of them is for the Willamette and Port Kearney. For instance, we have number five. She's not for the Willamette and Port Kearney. We have Snickerdoodle, we have Cherry, they're not for the Willamette and Port Kearney. And we have Toma, not for the Willamette and Port Kearney. Not labeled for it at the very least, and I don't really intend to have them for the main railroad. I just intend them to have them as locomotives that I can run when I feel like it. Um, and I even have a locomotive that at this point in time I don't think I've shown on the channel. I have a locomotive that I built for my father's birthday. That's not for the Willamette and Port Kearney. <laughs> so, of the six engines that I have managed to build in my time, in 0 and 30 in the last, what would it, what it have been, like six, seven months? Only one of them has been for the Willamette and Port Kearney. Kind of. We actually had one locomotive, a sister for number 21 here, that, um... I worked on in October or November. I don't remember exactly when. It was around the same time that we painted up Toma. Um, maybe like a week later. But I got another mogul, and I started painting it up as number 22. And I finished it within a night or two. It was very easy to finish. <sighs> okay, actually, there was one thing that I'm going to comment on it a bit that probably took me a little longer than two days. My memory is a little bit fuzzy, and unfortunately, the footage from when I built this engine is kind of lost. Maybe I deleted it. Maybe I'm just too lazy to try and find it. And maybe I want an excuse to do a single cut video where I don't have to use footage from five to six months ago. But we finished the engine relatively quick quickly, aside from two elements. One was the roof of the cab. We'll talk about that in a little bit. And another was the electronics on the engine, which I needed my father's help for. And we kept saying, oh, we'll do it tomorrow. After probably about, let's see, that would have been 150 times of us saying, oh, we'll do it tomorrow. We finally did it tomorrow. We finally got number 22 finished. We fixed the issues, the electrical issues, and I'm ready to show her on the channel. This is number 22. The goal for number 22 was to have a more modern looking locomotive than number 21. In the world I'm trying to build, number 21 was purchased by the Willamette and Port Kearney second hand. It was bought off another railroad as an experiment in a higher tractive effort to see what kind of engines would best suit the railroad. Mm. Ugh, excuse me. Number 21 quickly proved that it was worth its weight in gold, and thus the railroad purchased number 22, brand new, from whatever company built these locomotives. I believe this is a Cook Mogul of some kind, maybe an a, a Cook Alco engine. Whatever the case, this is one of the first engines that the Willamette and Port Kearney has purchased brand new in a long time for the railroad. So, in order to represent this, the engine has a more colorful boiler. It has an act it has a green boiler actually. I don't it's kind of hard to see. It's a very dark green. The camera is picking it up about as well as my own eyes can right now. Um it's got the red the fancy red roof. It's got the white stripe on the tender here. It's got the more modern headlight and it doesn't have any weathering unlike her sister, number 21. Also, actual cow catcher rather than the switcher's pilot. <laughs> 
Originally, the idea behind number 22 was just to make an engine that was supposed to be a quote-unquote express engine, because from what I've heard, these moguls were actually um, used on the Colorado and Southern to pull express passenger trains occasionally, as they did have pretty big drivers. <clears throat> but I also just like the idea that this is a more modern engine for the line, just in general, that this wasn't specifically purchased for express purposes, but was purchased because they liked 21 enough they wanted a number 22. This engine was originally Denver and Rio Grande Western, number 138. The engine had a green boiler already, and it actually, it seems to have been modified by its previous owner. This little coal pile here and the little steel bars or whatever surrounding it were already there when I got the locomotive. I did not add those myself. <clears throat> That's something that was there when this engine arrived. <clears throat> However, of course, I replaced the cab with a Banta Model Works cab conversion kit. This was a little bit of a nightmare specifically because of the cab roof, as I mentioned before, because this cab roof was very stiff and it did not want to bend into shape because the roof is round. And trying to hold it down and glue it in place in such a way that it would actually stay in its round shape was not easy. Most of the engine took a single night to build. That roof took us like three to four days of trial and error trying to figure out some way that we could hold it in place and make it look good. In the end, um, we just decided that if there was a very, very tiny gap, that was acceptable. <laughs> There is, it's hard to see. No, I am not showing it to you. I am not showing you my failures. Um, <laughs> that was probably the most annoying element of rebuilding this locomotive and repainting it. Another interesting thing that happened is this footstep right here, I think it's this footstep, is actually one off of another tender. The tender on this engine didn't have all of its footsteps, and so I cut one off of the Budweiser tender from the donation that TK gave us back many, many months ago when we first started this project. <clears throat> and I glued it in place, I repainted it, I repainted all of the footsteps, I repainted the tender water cap, repainted the... Well, okay, we'll get to the headlight in a second. The headlight's a weird little thing to talk about. <laughs> So, some funny things to mention. First of all, the water cap on the tender has a black handle. That was not originally intentional, I just forgot to paint it. But I realized that I liked it so much that I actually went back onto number 21 and repainted its handle to be black, rather than just leaving it red. I think it's a nice little detail that helps make it kind of stand out and pop and feel a little more special. The lettering on the tender is not actually lettering that I originally intended to use um, for a tender. I initially made this specific size of lettering for cabooses. <laughs> so it's really funny that I, I repurposed it for this, but it works. I think it looks really good here. It's a little bit crooked. It's really hard to see, though. <clears throat> but I feel like this, this basic lettering works surprisingly well on the locomotives. And I think probably the craziest part about this all is the headlight. That's actually a headlight that we took off of the 2662 articulated engine. The 2662 has a ton of spare headlights. Um, it probably has like six to eight spare headlights total. And so we just took one of them um, and put it on this engine. It helps to sort of add the... Um, What's the term? The, the more modern feel for this engine. The fact that this was bought brand new while number 21 was bought second hand. The real reason we put it on wasn't just that. Um, in actuality, the headlight on this engine was broken. <laughs> the problem was, this is actually a DCC engine. I haven't mentioned that yet. We'll get to that in a little bit when we're running it on the layout. Um, we actually determined what the problem was with the headlight after we broke it by breaking 
another locomotive. <laughs> so this is a funny little story. Um, we have a video file floating around, but I haven't bothered finishing for this wood-burning locomotive. Ooh, that I, I guess I just haven't posted because I'm a little bit lazy. But my father and I had some pretty nasty trouble with this engine. So the tender connects to the locomotive using a couple of wires. These wires are normally black. We had to replace the the six pin JST plug because I accidentally pulled it off of the wires. But in doing so, we had to figure out what order the wires were supposed to go onto the decoder so that when the the power goes between the decoder and the engine it, it does the right thing in the engine like controlling the headlight or accepting power from the wheels or supplying power to the motor so when i started jotting down notes for the 060 so that we could fix it in the future excuse me i don't know if that burp came through but i don't care um only half of the wires had been ripped out. And so what I did was I actually compared decoders. I compared the decoder on number 22 to the one in the little wood burner here. <clears throat> and in doing so, I, re I realized something. The headlight wires on number 22 were inverted. And the way we knew this was because one, okay, one half of the wires was still intact. So I jotted those down and I compared them here. Two of those wires uh, matched. They were identical, but one of them didn't. We knew that the headlight didn't work in this engine, but it did in this engine. And the wire that did not match in this tender was the wire for the headlight. And so it's kind of sad that we figured out, after ripping out the original headlight, what the problem was by breaking another engine. <laughs> but it turns out that the wires were just inverted. Anyways, maybe eventually I'll actually get around to doing the video on how we replaced the, the six-pin JST plug on this locomotive. But that's a story for another time. And how we truly figured everything out and how it kept breaking more and more because I kept trying to fix it. But there was one other issue with this engine and its wiring. And in order to show you what that issue was, we need to go to my father's model railroad for a minute. Well, okay, we don't need to go, but I want to go to my father's model railroad to better demonstrate this for a second. The reason I want to go to my father's model railroad is because this engine has a sound decoder. And I wanted to... Okay, it, <laughs> maybe running it over the crossings wasn't the best idea. It stalled out there for a split second. And now it's stalled out completely. Now, this stalling out is nothing new. This engine has had some troubles with that, and I think I need to add a keep alive to it eventually. However, oh, come on, what now? Oh, this car's not on tracks. That's it now. <sighs> Fun fact, my father has an alarm system that is set up whenever a short is detected on the layout. <laughs> Anyways, what I wanted to talk about today was how poorly this decoder was wired and how many flipping issues it has caused us. I would also like for this gondola to stop derailing. <laughs> Please, for the love of all things holy. All right. I hope that fixes it. I swear to God, if it doesn't. <laughs> the speaker was originally held in place 
or the, the wires connected to the speaker were originally held in place. We really need to keep alive in this engine. <laughs> it has, it's been working better than this, I swear. The wires on the speaker were held in place with tape. They were not soldered to the speaker at all. They were held in place with flipping tape. We soldered them in place. The speaker worked out fine, but then we accidentally ripped out the wire from the decoder, one of the two wires from the decoder, and we had to solder that back in. And for some reason, doing so changed the chuff rate on this locomotive. So that instead of sounding like a regular engine, like it does now, it sounded like an articulated. This little locomotive has given us so much hell when it comes down to electronics. And admittedly, some of that is our fault on procrastination because we could have gotten this done months ago. But, man, first of all, why did the person not solder in the, 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 the speaker? Second of all, why did soldering a wire back onto the decoder change its chuff rate to become unarticulated? Because that is the only thing that changed. And we reset the decoder, we set its values all back to default, and it still was an articulated engine in its mind. It baffles me. This engine project isn't quite done. We definitely need to add uh, a keep alive to it. Uh, that was the throttle's fault, not the engine. We definitely need to add a keep alive to it, considering how much it's been stalling here today, but... I'm still proud of how this thing has turned out. I'm happy with trying to go with something a little more colorful than I am normally used to. I'm happy with the way this has turned out. I'm happy with the fact that despite this engine being green and having a different headlight and having a different coal pile on the tender, this feels like a sister to number 21. This feels like a Willamette and Port Carney engine, at least to me. I'm happy I was able to achieve that with, well, whatever I did all those months ago. <laughs> all right enough rambling thank you all for watching i i hope you've enjoyed i'm sorry that this video isn't as technical as i would like it to be i'm sorry that uh <laughs> the engine stalled like five different times although that is admittedly funny um i'm happy with how this project turned out i hope you are too and hopefully, uh, next time I see you all, we'll have a place to run this engine, along with number 21. See you around. Cheers, folks. <laughs>